people like the idea of abortion, more people than you realize mm -hmm. on the left and the right. It's a lie uh, that this is going to help you. And I bought the lie. I believed all that they were saying on the left and ended up in and out of abortion clinic after clinic. It wasn't until the fourth time I went in one of their so-called safe, legal, rare clinics that I had a gut instinct down deep inside that there had to be something wrong with killing your offspring. According to Black Lives Matter, sexual codes are the tools of oppressors, and abortion is now being framed in terms of reproductive justice, not reproductive choice. What accounts for this shift in rhetoric? Why do blacks continue to advocate for black genocide by supporting candidates and a party that are determined to exterminate their unborn brothers and sisters? You'll get answers today on The Mark Harrington Show. Activist Radio, The Mark Harrington Show, is brought to you by Created Equal, and you can find out more about our ministry and the radio program by going to markharringtonshow.com. My guest today is Star Parker, and Star is the founder and president of the Center for Urban Renewal and Education. Star, thanks for being on the show. Oh, you're welcome. It's good to be with you. So, Star, we uh, met years ago, and of course I follow your work very closely. Uh, your organization promotes market-based public policy to fight poverty, but the thing that brought us together primarily was abortion, the, you know, the fight against abortion. That is, Created Equal is an organization that trains young people in pro-life apologetics and takes them to college campuses. And we've run into each other here or there now <laughs> through the years as we've traveled to Washington, D.C. And um, we have a mutual friend, that's Reverend Terry Gensmer. But what I wanted to bring you on the program about is just talk about, uh, you know, it's a kind of a common uh, subject, and that is Planned Parenthood. And, you know, my listeners, for the most part, are pretty much up to speed as to what Planned Parenthood's all about. But I think it's important that we revisit this occasionally to find out what's happening um, with Planned Parenthood. You know, they're still receiving fund funding from the federal government, believe it or not. We've been able to unable to defund them uh, from the, you know, the U.S. Congress. And I think still there are a lot of people out there that just think Planned Parenthood is just this great organization that helps women. So if you would give us, you know, a really quick summary on Planned Parenthood and their racist founding. Well, you're right that Planned Parenthood is accepted in many people's minds because they think that they're an organization that's doing good. But when you ask them deeper about what that good is, they actually bought the idea of abortion. And they actually buy the idea of abortion because they do think that it helps alleviate poverty. And this was the mindset of people like Margaret Sanger, the eugenicist, who believe that the fewer we have of people that are what they consider draining the system, the better off we would be as a people or as a, as a society or as as a world, uh, there are this, this survival. There's this survival of the fittest um, agenda that's running deeply in Planned Parenthood. And you mentioned about uh, why we're still funding. We're still funding because people still believe that this is a good idea. We see it all through our welfare programs. You got to ask yourself that why even when Republicans are in charge here in Washington, D.C., they still can't seem to get rid of that office in HHS, in Health and Human Services, called uh, population uh, 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 the Office of Population Affairs in HHS. So you got to wonder about this all of the time. Why we are always on the forefront of trying to end abortion is we not only believe here at Cure that it's a crime against humanity, but it's also that it feeds that narrative that women are victims and, and that they cannot control their sexual impulses. So as a result, Planned Parenthood and through its uh, agenda has created this environment to where marriage has totally collapsed and now people are having record numbers of children outside of marriage when they do decide to have children. And that's creating all types of other social concerns uh, that we here at CURE have to work on. You know, we would have thought years ago when the tapes came out, the undercover videos of Planned Parenthood selling baby body parts, but that would be the end of them. But it, it wasn't. They survived that scandal, believe it or not. I thought maybe we would see the ending, or at least the defunding, and it didn't happen. Uh, Star, if you would, I mean, give us a little bit of your background, why you feel called to make this one of your primary causes with CURE. Uh, you know, this, this uh, I guess, the ravaging, if you will, 
of the African American community, the black community, as regards to abortion. Uh, I mean, it's taking a massive toll on that community. How, tell us how you got involved and why you're so outspoken about this. Yeah, and our society at large. I mean, this has impacted us in yeah. very, very many spaces. And you keep pointing to instances about why we still haven't been able to defund, get rid of abortion, make it unthinkable mm-hmm. in our society. It's because people like the idea of abortion more people than you realize right. on the left and the right. It's a lie uh, that this is going to help you. And I just bought into all of the lies that this was going to help. I mean, let's face it, okay. we've had the body parts, so we've had the, the gauze nail tapes. There's not enough information mm-hmm. that hasn't been um, you know, shown to the public that this is a problem, but the public still buys it because they don't mind people that are buying into the lie to get rid of what God calls his reward. I bought the lie. I believed all that they were saying on the left and ended up in and out of abortion clinic after clinic. It wasn't until the fourth time I went in one of their so-called safe, legal, rare clinics that I had a gut instinct down deep inside that there had to be something wrong with killing your offspring. So then when I started seeing the numbers of how many other vulnerable women like myself had bought into that lie, we started becoming very active to at least try to get the pastors involved in saying that there's something wrong with this. It may be legal, but it's unlawful in God's eyes. But that in and of itself is very difficult to do because as a society, we have bought the lie that abortion is helping us, not harming Mm -hmm. us as a people. Yeah. Star Parker's my guest. You can go to the website curepolicy.org, curepolicy.org. She is the founder and president of the Center for Urban Renewal and Education, or CURE. And we're talking about the effect of abortion on culture and specifically the black community. Uh, Star, I, I don't know, recently we've seen the uh, the Biden administration has has vowed, if you will, to put up the first black woman as a nominee to the U.S. Supreme Court. What's your response? Or what do you think of that? I mean, obviously, we all would like to see that happen. But the fact that they went out of their way to say that's who they were going to try to nominate. What do you think of that? Because a lot of people well, are on different sides of that issue, you know. Well, I don't know why others are on different sides of it. But what I think about it is when <laughs> Susan B. Anthony put me on the list because yeah. I'm both black and female. I don't know there that I go. have the, any other qualifications. And we're hoping that the Biden administration looks at other qualifications, including the diversity of people's resumes. When you think about mm-hmm. this elite culture that has developed about the court itself, they are all Harvard learned or Yale. Uh, maybe we should mm-hmm. get someone that's even from a different background. If it's really diversity, they're looking for for, then they should look more at Michelle Childs. But if you notice what's happened is the progressive left is 100% against her uh, simply because even though she's African-American and she qualifies on that front, even though she's female, so she qualifies on that front, now we're starting to get into worldview and they find things in her worldview that they don't agree with. So at the end of the day, it's not whether Biden has decided he wants a black female. What Biden right. wants is a progressive and he's going to replace mm-hmm. a liberal with a That's progressive. True. Yeah. And why is it that and, and again, not to to brush with, you know, a broad brush here, but why is it that Democrats have continued to push this pro-abortion agenda for decades now? And for the most part, not entirely, of course, I think things are changing, but uh, black Americans tend to vote for them, even though we know disproportionately that um, African-Americans are having more abortions disproportionately. Uh, in respect to the overall population. Why do you think that continues even now? You just answered your own question that black people buy into abortion, so therefore they vote for people that are going to continue abortion in our society. I don't see the Democrats changing. This is a party of slavery. This is a party of, of, of thinking that they have the right to manage other people's lives. They are not going to change it. They want to control birth, and they do. And the rest of society buys into it because then you have disproportionate numbers that are in our minority communities that are having these abortions so they can keep the numbers low. Uh, we know mm. what it's really all about, so it's no need of us trying to figure out if Democrats are ever going to drop that from their party platform because they're not. They are the party of evil. They always have been. And hopefully we can get enough African-Americans and others Americans to understand that this is a crime against humanity. It is not consistent with the scripture. And therefore, we need to vote for people that are going to protect the innocent and protect life. And so let's talk a little bit about your organization, Urban Cure. What, what is it that you guys focus on primarily? 
Well, we fight poverty and restore dignity through messages of faith, freedom, and personal responsibility. So we have three okay. programs. We have a program in policy to where we want to change the law so we can change lives. We believe the government should not be in the charity business. So we want every single mm -hmm. program of anti-poverty block granted to the states. We want to personalize Social Security, and we want to advance an agenda of freedom. Uh, we also have a clergy program to get this information to those pastors that are serving in our nation's most hard-hit communities, that the answer to poverty is freedom, personal responsibility is not a welfare state. We should not have these government relationships when we're trying to fix people's, help people fix their lives. And then, of course, we have a media program with my show, Cure America with Star Park on my podcast and other people right. so that we can get the message out to the general population as well. Star Parker is my guest, and you can uh, pick up her TV show on curepolicy.org. Also, she has a podcast and a weekly column. And we're talking about um, abortion today on the Mark Harrington program here. So, a star, as we look at what's happening here, we've got the midterms coming up. And I don't want you to make too many predictions here. <laughs> Uh, but unfortunately, it looks like, uh, you know, the Democrats are doing everything they can to try to retain Congress. Uh, how do you think the African-American or the black community is going to respond here? Are they going to because we saw a little bit of a change with Trump. There were some black uh, voters that, that crossed over and voted for him. Do you think that will happen again? It just depends on what Trump does. I mean, my goodness, when he ran the first time, he had a message that he wanted to make America great again. And he focused mm -hmm. a lot of time and attention on the black community and the economic yeah. state of affairs. So that began to change under the Trump administration that blacks, for the first time in the history of the country, started seeing their unemployment rates really, really low and their income rates really high. And in fact, in 2019, it was the first time we've ever seen to where we had more blacks making over $75,000 a year than under. $25,000 a year. So there was real progress on the economic front. But going into this year's uh, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, elections, it's going to be interesting because the RNC seems to be moving away from their moral framework. The Trump yeah. is moving away from that and, and embracing this LGBTQ uh, agenda, if you will. And African Americans are not in support of that particular agenda. So it's hmm. just one to watch to see how people are going to sort through after the primaries are over uh, what's to their best best interest. Normally, you'll see the majority of African Americans trust in federal government as, a lo as opposed to local government. The exact opposite in the majority white community, they trust their local government and not the federal government. So it will be interesting to see if blacks are going to say, well, we're going to vote against our knowing that the local cannot be trusted and then go into uh, changing the federal relationship that we had to vote for a Republican. It depends on who the Republican Party puts up for the presidency in 2024 and who wins in these primaries in the various states where we have Senate seats open. Well, we all know that uh, both parties actually raise, racialize politics. We know that they, they do that often. Uh, two years ago, two summers ago, we had the uh, the riots, right, happening all across the country and cities and the emergence of uh, the Black Lives Matter organization. What are your thoughts on that organization? I know that they have an agenda. It includes being pro-abortion, uh, supporting what they call reproductive justice, which I think is an interesting euphemism. What are your thoughts on the organization Black Lives Matter? No, they're total Marxists. They've made that clear. People uh, still allow them to have a presence, whether it's in social media and other places, and major corporations are making sure that they have hundreds of millions of dollars to com complete their work, uh, which is collectivism right. and, and trying to find systemic racism. So what we have to do is build counter voices, and that's one of the things that we're doing here at CURE, is gathering up people that can have different voices uh, so that we can counter that of black uh, lives matters. I mean, let's face it, they're, they're, they've made their presence, they've made their positions mm -hmm. known, and now it's just a matter of do we as a society prefer a biblical and free society or do we want a status and uh, and secular pagan society? And that's what's really at stake. It is about the culture war, but abortion is, is the major reason that we're having this culture war because once you tell God that you're not important enough to say, I created mankind, and we then interject ourselves in that discussion to say, no, we have reproductive rights. No, we have 
reproductive justice. No, we can control birth. Once you as a society do that because you're so enlightened, you have gone against God's principles and then you're just up for grabs when it comes to just raw politics. And that's where we are today. And it's a very difficult place to be because now you have very few. The remnant has to rise up and push back this mm -hmm. kind of darkness, including the darkness of BLM. Star Parker is my guest, and, and she is a nationally syndicated columnist and author. And you can find out more by going to curepolicy.org. That's curepolicy.org. Uh, Star, we have a couple of minutes left. If you would, I, I just want you to speak to our audience. Uh, give us some marching orders from your perspective as to how we can uh, bring and help help bring about the type of thing that you're working for, which is urban renewal. And we hear about it from the federal government, usually means giving away money, right, and programs. How would you uh, suggest our listeners get activated in this cause? Well, the first thing they can do is make sure that we're really informed. It is true the statement that evil prevails when good men do nothing. So we have to be very engaged in our political process. And that means making sure that the best candidate consistent with a biblical worldview rises to the top when it comes to these primaries. And then once the, they win a primary, then they make sure that they show a real opposition to the other side, which is the Democrat side that just wants more bigger government. And the next thing you do then is follow policy. Once they get here to Washington, that's where we come in at Cure because we want to mm -hmm. get all of this uh, government intention off of us as a whole and get it down to the states where we experiment with different types of initiatives that will really move people in their personal lives toward freedom and toward prosperity. You can only do that on very local levels with local charity, with local business, with local government. And that's one of the goals that we should focus on. There are many good activities happening in a lot of different states. One of the beautiful things that happened under Trump administration was we identified all of those 8,700 uh, broken zip codes, if you will. We call them distressed communities. And so now we know exactly where to focus attention so that we can go get that cancer and, 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 and realize a healthy patient. So that's the real work is to make sure that we just remove the barriers uh, over the market system and remove the barriers over people's lives so that they can live free. The real question for conservatives is, do you really think that anyone and anyone can just live free? Can everyone mm -hmm. self-govern regardless of their station in life. And once you right. determine that, yes, God has given gifts and talents and everyone has the capacity to live and make proper choices for their lives, that they can self-govern. Once you make that decision, then you just get busy in your local community, making sure your charities have everything they need to help people reposition themselves and get on a right footing. Star Parker's been my guest, and you can uh, pick up her uh, TV show or podcast and read her weekly column by going to curepolicy.org, mm -hmm. curepolicy.org. She's the founder and president of the Center for Urban Renewal and Education. Star, thanks for being on the show today. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you so much for having me, and I look forward to seeing you again next year here at March for Life mm -hmm. in D.C. All right. God bless. God bless. So, friends, I want you to take action today uh, in order to uh, help the program. I'd like you to subscribe if you're interested to our podcast, and you can pick it up on any of the popular podcasting platforms 24-7. If you're listening to the program over the air on some of our radio stations or if you're watching by video on some of our video platforms, you can pick up The Mark Harrington Show on all of the popular podcasting platforms. Also on our website, markharringtonshow.com, there is an embedded audio player there as well. Second, if you would like to chime in and let us know here at the program uh, what you'd like to see or hear on the program, in other words, the topics that you'd be interested in me covering, possible guests that you have interest in hearing from, please let us know. Go to markharringtonshow.com. That's markharringtonshow.com. You can also leave a question or a comment, and I can read that question or that comment on the air. So what I want to do here in the re remainder of the program is talk about some kind of breaking news that happened earlier this week when uh, Created Equal posted a video on TikTok. Now, TikTok is another social media platform. This is a video of some uh, students at the University of Kentucky behaving very immaturely, mocking our uh, aborted baby photos and the gentleman, one of our staff members, that was standing in front of it. 
And the video went viral, and then the University of Kentucky responded to it. So what I'd like to do is go ahead and play this video. It might be difficult to hear, but you'll understand this is a they're they're joking and and mocking the picture of an aborted baby. Go ahead and play that clip. Actually, I promise I'd kill my baby if I got pregnant. I literally would. Are you kidding me? No uterus, no opinion. Now, if you hear them, they say no uterus, no opinion. Uh, one of our staff persons, that's Isaac uh, Bueller, was the person that they were directing that insult to, no uterus or no opinion, and they were dancing and chanting in front of an image of an aborted baby. Now, first of all, let's understand that this is not appropriate behavior. However, we often run into this kind of thing on college campuses. There is very little civility left in our culture. And these are young people who are typically, you know, just they're behaving immaturely. Uh, and often they do that in order to cope with the image of the aborted baby. Uh, they may have had an abortion themselves. They may have participated indirectly in an abortion, maybe taking a friend to have one. Typically, this kind of behavior, this mocking or laughing at aborted baby images is just a, t a coping mechanism. Now, what makes this story really interesting, I guess, is that the University of Kentucky tweeted out a message saying that they were going to investigate the students, that they were going to investigate them for this behavior. Now, a lot of people would say, well, right on, we're for that. We want the university to punish these young people for behaving the way they did. Well, here's the problem with that. The First Amendment protects stupidity. <laughs> you know, you're, you're allowed to be stupid and act immaturely. That's protected by the First Amendment. And one thing here at Created Equal, we understand that without the First Amendment, without free speech, without freedom of expression, there is no social reform, and we need to be consistent in its application. We understand that the First Amendment is the cornerstone to our republic, and we oppose universities acting like Big Brother. Now, these students didn't violate the law. They didn't vandalize our equipment or harm anyone. They didn't break any of the university rules. Therefore, the university should not be investigating them. So we were quick to respond to that. And along with FIRE, which is an organization that represents free speech on college campuses, and soon after the tweet was put out there that they might investigate these students, the University of Kentucky took down the tweet and apologized by saying that the tweet was inartfully worded, inartfully worded. So here's the lesson learned, and that is conservatives, Christians, pro-lifers need to be consistent in the application of the, pro, uh, of the, of the First Amendment. And we protect, we, we believe in the First Amendment. And even if it's something that's as distasteful and outrageous as students mocking an aborted baby photo and the gentleman that stood with it. Uh, we need to be consistent in our attitudes towards students. Uh, if they were pro-life students, we would defend them. And if they're pro-abortion students, we defend them as well. But we would prosecute, we do prosecute uh, students who break the law. So that's where we draw the line. Universities like University of Kentucky can play a role in teaching students to have a respectful dialogue, but they should not be in the business of being big brother and investigating them for this type of behavior. And we, we commend the university for trying to teach respectful dialogue and civility, but I think that's where we would say we disagree. And thankfully, the university took down the tweet and it appears they are not going to uh, investigate. So here's the bottom line, friends. The remedy to offensive speech is more speech, not less speech. It's not government involvement. It's not government censorship or any kind of censorship. It's not cancel culture. The remedy, the answer to offensive speech, disturbing speech like this type of thing on this campus, the University of Kentucky, is more speech, not less. More speech, not less. Now, I will say that a lot of pro-abortion students 
joined us in condemning the university for considering investigating the students. Um, we understand this, this type of behavior is outrageous, but it's increasingly common on college and high school campuses across America. And we are thankful that the University of Kentucky is not going to investigate this, these students. The, the fact that they were, um, you know, that this went viral and was all over the Internet is enough of a deterrent, hopefully, from them to do this ever again. So that's enough of a, I guess, a punishment for what they had done. Now, finally, this, one of the students said, no uterus, no opinion. I have a lot of time to get into this one. But when we attacked the man or the person in this case was, was Isaac Bueller, who was standing with the uh, pro-life sign, this is what's called an ad hominem logical fallacy, Attac attacking the man rather than the argument. And it's a, it's a logical fallacy. Also, we need to understand that uh, arguments don't have genders. People do. Arguments don't have genders. People do, and the, the, the argument's either going to rise or fall based on the logic of the argument or not, not the person actually making the argument. So that's the lesson learned from the University of Kentucky, and you can watch the video go by going to my social media at markharringtonshow.com. We'll see you next time. God bless you. God bless America, and remember America to bless God. You've been listening to Mark Harrington, your radio activist. For more information on how to make a difference for the cause of life, liberty, and justice, go to createdequal.org. To follow Mark, go to markharringtonshow.com. Be sure to tune in next time for your marching orders in the culture war.